Hey guys, I am back again with another video in the WinISD series. I wanted to show you this particular one, which is on passive radiators. I know a lot of people have questions about passive radiators, what they are, and how they work. Basically, a passive radiator is a port. Um, it is a way to tune a speaker to a certain frequency without having to uh, worry about ports. Now, the reason why you would want to do this one uh, you're terrified of ports. If you don't want to put a port in, you don't want to worry about the tuning frequency. Okay, great. Two, if the port is the only port you can fit in the box, for example, it's too small and is going to create chuffing or port noise, then you're going to want a passive radiator. Another reason why you may want a passive radiator is the box is too large that you're trying to put it in. Passive radiators typically take much smaller box. Um, so you can actually have a much smaller box and get similar performance out of it. Sometimes it's it's a little less performance, but it's it's pretty similar. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a new project and show you a passive radiator and how to tune it. A passive radiator does not have any motor or anything to it. Okay, a passive radiator looks like a speaker, but there's no nothing to it. The only thing that's in the, on the back of a passive radiator is typically a bolt of some kind that allows you to put washers on it. The reason why it does that is it allows you to add weight which changes the tuning frequency. And we'll take a look at that. Now we're going to use the, N, the Dayton ND98 for this and we're going to use two of those in this one enclosure and we are going to change the enclosure size to a passive radiator and we're going to click next. Now you're going to put your passive radiator um, the parameters in here. You're going to find those on the website that you buy your passive radiator from. If you can't find it, like if you're on eBay or something, they may not have it. But places like Parts Express or Dayton Audio, which um, sells their own passive radiators, uh, places like that will have the specs for these. And you're going to want to put these in. This is actually a Dayton Audio 6.5 inch passive radiator typical what you want to do is one double the passive radiator for the size speaker so if you have one 12 inch sub you need two 12 inch passive radiators typically um, you're going to see that's not the case in this particular scenario as we're doing two three and a half inch speakers with one six and a half inch um, and, it, and it does work so let's click finish when we do we're going to get a warning and this warning basically is just saying that you need to fine tune and adjust it by hand. If you take a look, this, like I said, the WinISD typically figures everything out for you. It doesn't with passive radiators. Passive radiators, you have to do it yourself. There's two things with passive radiators that you need to adjust. One, the passive radiator itself. You can change the number of passive radiators. One, two, three, four, eight, whatever. And the mass. Uh, these particular speakers luckily don't need any more mass. If you add mass to it, it lowers the tuning frequency. Okay, so if it's tuning too high, like if it's tuning at 100 hertz and you want to tune it down to 60 hertz, you're going to need to add mass. And then the last thing you want to look at is the box. The box is the volume and it also gives you the tuning frequency. Now we can see that it's tuning too low. It's tuning at 42 hertz, which is somewhere in this range right here. And our F3 is about 63. Now, our F3 and tuning hertz should be very similar. So, if this is too low, if it's tuning too low, past lower than the F3, then you need to lower your box. So, let's put a 0.2, for example. So, 0.2 is at 60 hertz. And you're at 63 hertz f3 so point two would work just fine if you wanted to build that box I am actually going to do a point one eight two or somewhere in that range box and once again you have about the same 63 hertz and 65 f3 that's perfect anything in the point two to point one eight two it somewhere in that range is gonna be fine it's gonna tune it well you are gonna notice this hump here that's actually something we do want with a full range speaker and that is due to the fact that full range speakers the highs because of well, there's a terminology called baffle step correction 
um, and we'll get more into that with another video but a baffle step correction basically says that the lows are going to be lower than the highs in a full range speaker setup and so you need to compensate for that one of the ways you can compensate for that is by creating a little hump in the signal um, of course you're, you're going to do other things with it too you still have to attenuate down the highs but that's one of the things you can do now we're not finished yet we need to go to signal and we need to put how many watts we're going to put to the speaker now this speaker can take a total of 40 watts that's 20 watts per each speaker okay so each speaker can take 20 watts so if we can do so we're going to insert the system output of 40 watts in the signal when we do that we're going to click up here and we're going to change the graph to passive radiator and cone excursion PR. Okay, That stands for the cone excursion and the passive radiator. Since the passive radiator is a speaker, it does have a cone excursion. Okay, Now what that means, um, basically there's going to be a buildup of pressure inside the box and that pressure is actually going to move that speaker or the passive radiator, I'm sorry. And if it moves it too much, then that cone will have cone excursion and, and you'll ruin the passive radiator and it'll sound terrible. Luckily, we don't have to worry about cone excursion at all. Red line is cone excursion. The purple line is the actual speaker itself. I'm sorry, the passive radiator itself. So we don't have to worry about cone excursion from the passive radiator. And that's if we go max wattage. So that is great to know. Um, in fact, we, we got room to go. I mean, we, you know, those speakers can't go 60 watts, but even if they could, you would still be set. So, I mean, you got plenty of room to go with that passive radiator code excursion. One last, uh, one thing you can always look at, I always look at the SPL, and the SPL is perfect. One of the reasons why SPL is good to look at, um, especially if you're doing like a ported or passive radiator boxes because sometimes this SPL can do something funky um, but yeah this looks great and so we have a very good setup with a passive those two speakers let's do a couple things to show you how this would change if we did go like one driver for example um, I'm sorry I don't want to do one driver. I want to do, I'm sorry, if we wanted to add mass to that one passive radiator, you see you're creating a hump down here because you're now tuning it way lower. You're tuning it at 43 hertz. And so you're creating that hump. Now, that's great for a speaker that may need it. This particular speakers don't need it. So something like the ND65 uh, speakers, which are two and a half inch speakers, if you wanted to pair it up with something like this, you would need to tune that. Now this just shows you to just just kind of shows you that you can't just pick any passive radiator out. You do kind of need to pair it up with the right size box, the right size speakers to make it sound well. Um, that's really it, guys. Like always, please if you have any questions, ask them below. Um, any comments, I always welcome those. Um, and, and honestly, if you like the video, like it, share it, tell others about it. Um, and, oh, one last thing. I will be actually building this speaker, so you'll be able to see this particular speaker that we're modeling come to fruition in a few weeks. So if you, if you want to see that, stay tuned, and we'll have that. It's going to be called the JP Build. All right, guys. Talk to you later.